Yes, that man in orange is me. And I went to meet that incredible team of IT support people with the three men in blue, that fantastic woman in violet, and her exceptional colleague in yellow. I'm Kristen from Vision 6D, and we are going to look how Microsoft Team Planner is helping us in planning tasks that are really not dependent on one another and how it's helping that team to plan their work. In our example, I have already prepared here a list of tasks that that small IT support team will perform in the coming weeks. I have tasks like phone and remote support to prepare a PC for a new coworker give some support on office products, especially word to the administration department, evaluate and test new monitors, install support arms for monitors, recover lost files, prepare a new laptop for a new sales rep, and some support on new modules that were introduced on the ERP systems, or even to change at the CEO's offices printers or scanners. So these are the kind of tasks that this team is performing weekly. In order to, to look at this in a closer way, we go into resources here and we select the team planner. So once within the team planner, I can take a task and put it simply here on this panel on which you see that we know we have to perform that task during that time, but it's still not assigned to anybody. I can move it like that once it is positioned or I can even move it outside. So since this is the support that everyone is performing uh, one after the other one for one week, I position this here and I'll say, okay, first week it will be team that performs that kind of task. The second week it will be Henry that will be doing the support. And the third week I will put it for Tom. As you can see here, we see for each task uh, the information of the duration. And here there was a mistake. So I will go into information about that task. And of course, the duration was of two days and I will bring it up to five days. Like that, we have for the three coming weeks, all the support tasks that are set in place. What I, I know is that Henry is really the person to prepare PCs. So you see, I still don't know exactly when I will schedule it, but I know that this is a task for him. After that, I will need also a new laptop here down below for an accountant or a sales rep. Yes, it was a sales rep. And I know that this is also a task that I would like Henry to have. So here we see the case of two tasks that are assigned to somebody, but for the moment aren't scheduled. So what I have next, it's word support here. And I know that Paul is really good at doing this. So I will assign him this. He can start on Monday with that. To evaluate and test new monitors, um, this I'm going to assign it to, let's say, Tom. Install and support arms for monitor. I'm going to assign this to Tim. Now, what I know is that it's better if there are two people uh, doing the installation of the arms. It's a bit better. So I would like to have Tom to do it with Tim. So I'm going here now in the information and among the resources, you see that Tim was assigned to this task and I will also add Tom here. Okay, so here now we have something that is happening. It means that we have a conflict. So I think that I will schedule here a bit on the side for the moment 
remove the over allocation by having the two being able to perform this over next week. To evaluate and test monitors, I will give that task to Tim now. Now I have other tasks which are ordering of material that we have to do every week. I will give this to Tom. The week before, I will give this to be done on Monday as first task to Henry. And we see that now I can propose to Henry to do the installation of a new PC here up and prepare a new laptop here on those days. So we know that we will have some training next week, so on Tuesday and Wednesday. So we need to prepare the space for the, the training and this has to be done the day before. So we know that it has to be done on Monday. We still don't know who will be performing that task, but we know that it has to be done on Monday. I see here that I have a task which is to recover the lost, uh, the lost file from one of the HR assistants. So this I'm giving it to uh, Tom. Next task is to support uh, ERP within the new modules, uh, which are the purchase module. And this is something that Julie is doing really well. I see that we need to change the, the printers at the CEO's office. So for this, I see that Tom is available for, the, for that. So I will let him do this. And here I see that we need to troubleshoot a PC from the accountant. So this is quite urgent. So let me see how I could do this. Okay, so I see that uh, I have Tom, which has availability here. Maybe it could be better to troubleshoot this before to go to change the printers for the CEO's offices. So I will swap those two. Like that, I have more or less ordered those uh, things. So I see that I have two tasks, one which is support ERP for the new accounting module. So this I will give it again to Julie. Uh, she's really good at that and people appreciate her. And um, I still need to schedule to order material on week three. So this I will leave it for Paul. Let's say for Paul, he will do it on the third week. So this is the schedule that I have for the moment for my team. Here you see that I didn't go and filled every gap. I always like to leave a bit space and margins for people. They are always unexpected things. There are always researchers. They want to do a new material. So it's always good to give a bit air to people. So now let's admit that we are moving ahead in this uh, week. And I'm going to set the date to the status date, which is here, to the next Wednesday. And you see that immediately the planner is showing us that here in grey, these are the ongoing tasks till that day. In clear blue, you see those that haven't started for the moment. And let's admit that till that point in time, everything went really well with the project. So we update the project status and you see here that I'm going to say that everything went 100% till the 1st of May. At that moment, you see that from gray, it passed to a darker blue. So this means what has been achieved and in clear blue, what still has to be done. So if I take, for example, the material ordering, you see that it is 100% complete. It was during eight hours. Here, if I take phone and remote support without any exception, we are at the third day. So three days out of five are done. So it's a 60% which has been done. The complete work should be 40 hours. 
at that point we might be interested to go and to see the look that it has on the Gantt chart. On the Gantt chart you see that we didn't insert information but we see that all the tasks are manually scheduled and this is important to know that you have to do it that way with the planner. You see the durations we had and now we have start and finish dates as well as we have resources as we have the task scheduled on the planning with the resources that will work on it. And you see the clearer, the darker bars inside, which are showing the percentage completion of the task. So let's move back now to the resource planner. So now we need to insert a new task. So I go on tasks and I do here insert of a task. And here down, you see that I need to go into information to name the task. And what was requested, it's to test new PCs. And the duration of the test will be of four days. So I have this that came in and the good candidate for this is Paul. So I will put Paul to do that on that day. We will now have a new task, which is test antivirus. And I think that it's really a task for Paul. So I'm proposing him to, to do this. And for me, it will be okay if he does it on the third week. When I spoke to him about this, he was really happy to get that task. But he said that week he would like to take off the Thursday and the Friday. So I had to take this into consideration. I know that Paul will do the task, but now I have to set in place the two days when he will be off. For this, I go into the resource Paul itself and here you can see change working time. So I'm going to change working time and I'm setting here days off. And it will start here on the 16th of May and end by the 17th of May. And you see that immediately those days are marked as non-working days. So now I have entered the days off for Paul. So the task now has to be auto-scheduled. In that way, it will be able to take the days off into account. So I'm moving this here up, you see, and I'm going to give it to Paul for that week. And immediately MS Project is prolonging the task since they are two days off of Paul. So there is one thing when you introduce new PCs and uh, you change antivirus on systems, you need to test all the automations that were put in place with Office products and any other thing you developed. So for this, we have here a number of days to do test automation. I would like Julie to do this because I see that she is available here. Nevertheless, you see, I could do that but I want to have a constraint. It's that I want at least the new PCs to be tested and I want the antivirus also to be tested. So it means that I would like to put this at some other place in time. Now, since we are manually scheduling the tasks, there is no difficulty in putting it at the wrong time. So for this, I will need to change that task, get it back and schedule it also as a not a scheduled task. Once it is out of scheduled, I will go into the information of the task here and I will give constraints on the predecessors. So let's look. So we see here that we have the list of tasks before we can start the test of the automations, 
we need to finish the test on the new pieces as well we need to finish the test on the antivirus so i have here two predecessors that are defined in this task so now i'm going to say okay and we see that it is immediately moved at the right position so it's from there on that i can propose that julie does this work now I want to, to give a better look to my planning, so uh, I go here and I will give some colors to my tasks. And especially the recurring one, I will give it an orange color like that. We know orange is always the phone and remote support and we, at the first look, know who is in charge of this for this week. So I'm going to do the same here up and I'm also going to do this here down. Like that, we have some formatting that is possible on this diagram. So we've moved ahead with the planning, but there is one task which is left. It's the preparation of the training space. The training will happen on Tuesday and Wednesday, so we are obliged to do this on Monday. So I see that all my tasks are here, but what I think I can do is, for example, to, to move the tasks that I propose to Paul, and he can do this, he can do the preparation on Monday. So with that, I've done the complete schedule of the coming two weeks. We've got now a complete overview of the team planner. You liked it, you can sum up, you have questions, feel free to, to ask, feel free to make me suggestions or any comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. For me, it will be a pleasure to meet with you again in the next video. See you, bye-bye, and have a good time.